It is Sunday, October 17th. Is it? It is Sunday, October 16th, 2022. And on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about Robbie Coltrane's cruise ship. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. And I'm obviously not good at dates, but if you've been here for a while, you knew that already. And before we get into the main subject of this video, which you already know, I want to tell you about how I ended up getting to this subject. Obviously, you probably have heard by now, but the actor who played Hagrid in all of the Harry Potter movies, his name is Robbie Coltrane. He passed away for me, it was yesterday, Friday, October 14th, and it just happened to be this strange coincidence that Marcus and I were invited to see the Harry Potter theater extravaganza here in Hamburg. This is a uh, like a play, not a musical. It's a play that is all day long. It starts at 2.30 in the afternoon, and then you have Act 1, a short intermission, Act 2, a longer intermission, and then at 7.30 at night, then you have Act 3, a shorter information, uh, intermission, Act 4, and then it's over at 10.30, and you've spent like the whole day in the Harry Potter world. It was fantastic. I was very happy to be there, and of course, I wrote about it on social media, on my Instagram, and on Facebook. And in one of the breaks, my niece wrote to me something like, Hagrid's dead, hope you're having fun. And I thought, um, well, it's the second act, honey, and he's not dead yet, so thanks for the spoiler. And I didn't realize until I got home last night at 11 o'clock in the evening and turned on the internet, that's when I realized, oh, Robbie Coltrane, the actor who played Hagrid, passed away today when I just happened to be also at the Harry Potter play. And so I did what I think a lot of people are doing right now and I started clicking on articles and just reading about his life and who he is and what he had been up to, things like that, and that's how I found out about his love for a specific type of cruising and a specific cruise ship, and that's how I got to the subject of this video. This isn't the kind of video that I usually make, but it's the kind of video I'm making today, and the ship we're gonna be talking about is called the TS Queen Mary. Not to be confused with the Cunard Queen Mary. That's a different ship. <laughs> So the TS Queen Mary was built way back in 1933 and it was classified as a Clyde steamer. Clyde is a river. And this is a general term for passenger ships that cruised along that passageway in the late 1800s and early 1900s, all the way up to like 1960. Yes, people. History. According to Wikipedia, there were over 300 of this kind, this sort of class of ships in service. And it was all going well until the 1960s when other forms of transportation, other ship, classes arrived and other forms of like taking a vacation became popular. The TS Queen Mary, which we're gonna get to Robbie Coltrane's involvement in this whole thing. Like I said, it was built in 1933 and it was actually cruising with passengers up until 1977. That's not, that's not really that long ago. That's a very long life for a cruising vessel. After its final sailing, a lot of things happened to it. First, she was supposed to become a museum in Glasgow, but those plans fell through, and then she was towed to London, where she was moored at Victoria Embankment and was there as an event location until 2009. And this is weird to me because I studied in London for a while and I've been to London so many times and I just never knew. I wish I had known about it then, when I was there because I would have liked to see it then too. In 2009, the ship changed owners and it was moved to Tilbury where it was supposed to become a, wait for it, restaurant and fitness studio, okay? But those plans also fell through and the ship sat there deteriorating until around 2015 and this is where Robbie Coltrane shows up and before we get to that, let me just invite you to subscribe to the channel here. Uh, it costs you nothing and we'll give you updates about when the next video gets posted. Coming up on the very unofficial travel guides, you'll see more of our recent cruise with Virgin Voyages with this crazy pool party, talking about the food, talking about our cabin. And after that, we are going to be exploring the amazing Royal Caribbean Wonder of the Seas. So if those are things that interest you, please hit that subscribe button and press thumbs up before you go. All right, in 2015, a group appears called the Friends of T.S. Queen Mary. And the head, the spokesperson of this group is 
Hagrid actor Robbie Coltrane. He grew up in Scotland, he had cruised with these ships, he had cruised even with this ship, and decided that he wanted to use his fame and his draw to bring attention to this cause and to bring this historical ship back to its home. After a few newspaper articles and television interviews and creating a YouTube channel with 18 subscribers, including me, in less than a year, enough money had been raised to tow the ship back towards its original home and park it in dry dock back on the Clyde River. Or do you say the River Clyde? In this interview from 2016, Robbie said they need two million pounds to complete the renovation. You could tell, couldn't you, from the tone of my voice, I'm eventually going to ask you for money. And she does need a bit of work, obviously. She needs a jolly good look at paint and a bit of restoration. And it's going to cost about two million pounds. And you can help by sending donations to the friends of T.S. Queen Mary. But fast forward to a few articles from this year where they're saying they're gonna need six million pounds to not only renovate it into a museum, but also to make it seaworthy again. And by the way, this picture from tatler.com shows the current state of the ship and she's looking pretty good, huh? And can I just take this moment to talk a little bit about history and preservation? I find it really interesting and really honorable that there are people who are willing to spend time and money and use their fame and other means to work on preservation projects like this. Not not everything has to be brand new. Not everything has to be the biggest, the fastest, the largest, whatever. I mean, for six million pounds, the city of Glasgow could have built an amazing hotel with a water park that probably more people would, in the end, enjoy. But this project is going through, and it's because of people like Robbie Coltrane. And I just... I just appreciate that. You know what I mean? So speaking of fundraising, Robbie also started a Cameo account to raise money for the project. And Cameo is this website where I'm not plugging Cameo, by the way. I'm just explaining to you what it is in case you don't know. It's a website where actors, musicians, sports, personalities, just tons of people, they sign up there and then you can basically buy a personalized video from them. You can buy it for yourself or you can buy, you know, you can get like your favorite football quarterback to say happy birthday to your girlfriend, whatever. Robbie Coltrane started a Cameo account where his cameos, they only cost 12 pounds, which is really not a lot, and managed to raise another 75,000 pounds, which he donated to this cause. That information is according to this article from glasgowlive.co.uk. He was quoted as saying he wanted to redouble his efforts in order to raise enough money to even make the ship seaworthy again so it could go out sailing, but he said he's only gonna do it if he could be the first person to turn the engines on. And unfortunately now we know that's not gonna happen. Yesterday, October 14th, as we were watching the epic Harry Potter play, he unfortunately passed away at the age of 72. And you know, it's sad when somebody like this passes away. I mean, it's sad when anybody passes away, obviously, but this is somebody whose work, whose contribution to pop culture has been a part of so many people's lives. These roles in the Harry Potter films, you can kind of compare them to like, you know, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Indiana Jones, these like iconic roles from movies, at least in my lifetime, that I just feel like everybody knows who these characters are, and they also know the people who played them. It's kind of a big deal when they leave us. It has something to do with nostalgia, and I mean, like, yesterday when we went to see this play, the moment that Harry and Ron and Hermione are all standing on stage together, I totally started crying, just because it feels like visiting old friends. I mean, even though, I mean, speaking of visiting old friends, the the man playing Harry Potter here in Hamburg is a guy that I worked with in Mamma Mia, so he is an old friend. But I'm just talking about like the nostalgia and then the fact that these actors leave us and then, you know, like there's not gonna be another Harry Potter movie with 
the same person playing Hagrid. And that's just, it's sad. So my condolences to Robbie's family, to anybody else who's been really touched by this news. The world has lost not only an amazing actor, but also sort of an activist for the history of these cruise liners from Glasgow. And I just wanted to mention that in this video. And if you are interested in learning more about this cause that was so important to Robbie Coltrane, then check out tsqueenmary.org.uk to get all the information and also find out how you can donate. And that's that. And like I said, coming soon on the very unofficial travel guides, you will see more of the Valiant Lady as well as the Royal Caribbean Wonder of the Seas. But now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, I talked about my honest opinion of our recent cruise on the Wonder of the Seas. I went through the survey that I got sent from Royal Caribbean, went through all the answers and talked a little bit about each of the points. Interesting fact, none of them were related to value for cost, just interesting. These first two comments are on that video. The first one is from Stephen or yeah, Stephen F. Stephen writes, I understand you need to make content, but wow. 30 minutes on filling out a survey? Maybe highlight the most important points? Summarize? Just my opinion, but you do need to fill content, so I get it. Well, thank you for this constructive criticism. Uh, let me let me react to that by saying the video was not 30 minutes long. It was only 28 minutes long. I'm kidding. I don't mean to be that sassy. And I did talk about the survey for a large part of it but I also talked about other things and did comment on the comments. And yeah, I mean, I have made over a thousand YouTube videos and not every single one of them is gonna be like a blockbuster. You know what I mean? And what I love about all of you and what I really appreciate is that sometimes you'll see that I post a video and you might think, okay, that's, that's not one for us, but then you still come back the next time and you don't unsubscribe and think just because there's one video or maybe one ship or maybe one theme park or something that I'm currently focusing on that that's a reason to like for you to disappear forever that you just come back when I get back to something that you're interested in. So thank you very much for that. And yeah, Steven, sorry, this that one wasn't uh, super interesting all the way through for you, but Maybe this one was. Next comment is from Dave Cast. Dave writes, I believe the comment of Cunard by Carnival was meant to be Costa by Carnival in relation to the two Costa ships Carnival is going to operate in the US. Not to be confused with the rebranding of Costa Luminosa to the Carnival Luminosa. I also really believe value for Costa is extremely important metric. It is part of the reason I've been quite happy on my 14 Carnival cruises, yeah. We've only done one carnival cruise so far and we had a great time and it was a great value for money. And the other thing that Dave is talking about here is there was a comment on the last Sunday Sofa Time that I talked about that somebody saying they were looking forward to the Cunard by Carnival Cruises and I just didn't know what that meant. Okay, the final comment is actually on the last video I posted and it is from the this beach trip that I did in Italy while cruising with the Valiant Lady where I saw something that I guess I didn't need to see. I think a lot of you have seen that video already and this just made me laugh so hard. It's from Andrea Griffiths. Andrea writes, so the edge of her lady garden had gone beyond the fence line. Yeah and then some. If you don't know what that's about, just go watch the vlog from a couple days ago. You will hear and see all about what that means. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great day today. Whatever day it is when you're watching this, maybe sit down and watch your favorite Harry Potter movie. Mine were the last, like, two episodes of it. I feel like when you go back and watch the first two right now, you just realize how inexperienced these kids were as actors. And when you compare that to the final films, especially Emma Watson, just her, her acting ability just got so much better. I'll be back here next week and I hope you will too. Bye bye.